These are uh, MRI images, structural brain images, from a child that had a stroke during the prenatal period. It affected all of her major language areas, uh, uh, that, is, that is, the language areas that would have become language areas in, a, in an adult. You can see the injury over here on the left side of the brain. There's significant loss of white matter on this side of the brain compared to this side of the brain and also the, 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 deep, um, the deep grape matter structures. She's also lost a significant amount of, of cortex within these, these cortical regions. She has some left, but she has, it's, it's, it's suffered considerable damage. And uh, the neuroradiologist report is that both Broca's and, and both the expressive language and the comprehension areas have been compromised. Um, okay. Um, this child, his, her history, we follow them longitudinally, so we know what her language acquisition was like. This child was extremely delayed in language. At age two and a half, she had no productive language. She did not talk at all. Um, she was beginning to talk by the time she was three. That's very late. Most children begin to talk uh, sometime during the second year of life. But interestingly, by age five, she'd made considerable progress. By age five, she began to test uh, within the normal range when we use standardized tests of language. And by age six, she was, she, her language was, was well within the normal range. And what I'd like to do is I'd like you to listen to this child when she was six years of age. This is a child with a very large stroke with compromise to all of the major language areas of the brain, delayed in language acquisition, and yet listen to what her speech was like when she was six. Okay. Oh, the, the measure that we use in order to obtain the language sample is a little like the cookie theft. We use a wordless pic picture book uh, that was done years ago by Mercer Mayer. It's called Frog, Where Are You? Um, what we do is we ask the children, we have, let them look at the, at, at the story so they have an, a, a sense of what the book is about, and then uh, we ask them to tell the story. Uh, it's a story of a boy, a dog, and his vagabond frog friend. Okay. Okay, so they tell us a story going page by page, uh, and that way we're able to obtain a significant language sample from them. So th what I'm going to do is give you a short sample of her language as she was telling the story. The dog is looking in the frog bowl. In the night, when the girl is sleeping, the frog jumped out of its bowl. What the boy instead, when the boy woke up next morning, he looked that the frog was gone. Then the boy and the boy was looking at the hat, and the dog was going in the in the frog bowl. Then he looked outside the window, and the dog had the bowl on his head. Then the dog jumped out with the bull on his head. Okay, you can hear from, from this, this narrative that this child's expressive language is, is quite good. She's completely age appropriate. Other testing shows that her speech comprehension is also uh, well within the normal range. So although the injury to this child's brain was comparable to the injury that we saw in the adult aphasic, uh, uh, the child was able to compensate for the effects of her injury in a, in a way that the adult was not. The question is, how did she do this? Was she able to recruit kind of atypical uh, brain areas to, uh, to help her uh, with this important task? In a recent study uh, by uh, Beverly Wolfeck and Chris, uh, Christina Sackerman, we were able to look to see what parts of the brain this child activates in, when she's engaged in a language task. Um, okay. Um, this, this study was done when this child was 10 years old, so this is a few years after the language sample that you heard. Um, what, we asked, uh, what, they, what we asked individuals to do is to, is to perform in a language task while they're having their brain imaged, functionally imaged, uh, at the MRI center. The task is a simple one. Uh, the individuals are, are shown two pictures, like the ones you see here, and basically they're asked uh, who did what to whom. So the two pictures come up, then there is an auditory sentence that they hear. It says, the cow is pushing the elephant, and what they're to do is to respond uh, by pushing one button if they think the cow did it, and the other button if they think the elephant did it. Okay. This task was given to subjects while their brains were being imaged using fMRI. Um, and in order to see what areas of the brain were active. Let's look first at the brain activation patterns in, in typical adults and typical 10-year-old children. Okay, okay. so there we are on, on 
on the left, what you see are, is the typical activation patterns for the adults, a to, uh, top and bottom uh, picture, and in the middle you see typical, uh, typical children. What you see in this small inset are, are, the way in, are the slices that you're looking at. So if we took this brain and we cut it this way at the two levels that you see indicated there, at the bottom slides indicate the lower cut, the top slides indicate the upper cut. Um, one of the things that, that you should notice is that when we look at these lower two slices, um, what we are looking at are two of the major language areas of the brain. You'll notice this yellow line goes through both the expressive area and the production area. Uh, now this was primarily a, a language comprehension task. You listen to something and, and interpret it. Um, and so it's probably not surprising that these, uh, these comprehension areas of the brain showed a lot of activation. But we also see some activation in, in the production areas further forward in the brain. So all of the major language areas are engaged. Also notice up here that there is, in both the adults and children, another area that's active. This is somewhat outside the typical language areas, but this is an area that is typically involved in verbal working memory. So it's a, a verbal memory area. So these are the patterns for typical adults and children. What does the activation look like in this child that we've just been listening to? Okay. So here are her activation data. Um, first notice that she also activates the limited tissue that she has available in the traditional language area. So like, her, like the normal children and like the adults, she is uh, activating what's left of this normal comprehension area. Um, however, notice that she has also recruited a considerable amount of, of, uh, of brain within the right hemisphere. So she activates what's left uh, of the language areas, typical language areas in the left hemisphere, but also recruits these additional right hemisphere resources.